there are few historical nations which capture the imagination as much as Prussia, with its staunch militarism, its dedication to phenomenal facial hair and its iconic borders. Yet, if you look at a modern map, you'll see that there's a distinct lack of Prussia. But why? What happened to it and where did Prussia go? Now, I know what many of you will already be saying. Prussia just became Germany, right? Which is both true and also isn't. You see, Prussia wasn't just a nation-state, but it was a cultural centre, a major part of the German-speaking world, and briefly an international great power whose influence stretched far beyond its own borders. Prussia's journey from firmly existing to not isn't a linear one, and this change starts in the mid-19th century. In 1866, due to a conflict surrounding the ownership of some land recently taken from Denmark, Prussia went to war with the Austrian Empire and its allies. It promptly defeated them, and as a result, the Prussian Chancellor Otto von Bismarck annexed the northern Austrian allies and forced its own to join the North German Confederation which wasn't really a unified nation-state, but more of an alliance completely dominated by Prussia. The North German Confederation didn't last too long, because if you look at the time, you'll see it's time for war with France. And in this war, the Prussians were on the same side as the southern German states who came to its aid. And after defeating the French army, the victors proclaimed the creation of the German Empire, and for many, this is where Prussia ceases to exist. Except that it didn't. The German Empire, as the name suggests, was an empire, and it consisted of several kingdoms, duchies and principalities, all of whom were considered to be semi-independent, barring matters of collective defence, that is. The emperor of this new Germany was also the king of Prussia, and the empire's chancellor was automatically the prime minister of Prussia too. Despite Prussia's dominance of the new German state, it shouldn't be seen as Prussia simply becoming the German Empire and as having annexed the other parts. They were all separate in the same way that Hungary and Austria were separate in the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Like all empires, the German one didn't last forever, and after World War I it was dissolved, lost a bunch of territory, and was succeeded by the Weimar Republic. Much like the rest of the empire, Prussia lost its royalty and became the free state of Prussia minus these lands, and it was now governed by its own diet. Now, obviously, Prussia still existed, but it was very changed and no longer reflected what it's historically famous for. For one, it was one of the more stable parts of the troubled Weimar Republic. For example, its state government was nearly always run by Otto Braun of the Social Democratic Party, which brought it into conflict in the late 1920s with the conservative German Chancellor and the central government. To fix this, the German Chancellor Franz von Papen and President Hindenburg issued a decree in 1932 simply dissolving the Prussian state government, and von Papen was now directly in charge of the state. He didn't lie and neither did the Weimar Republic, and its replacement maintained direct control over Prussia. The new government reformed Germany's internal states into new units called Gau in 1934. And this was basically the end of Prussia as a single territorial unit, but there were some titles and traditions which remained. Along came World War II, and as you'll know, Germany lost this one too. As the country was being occupied, Otto Braun approached the Allies and asked them to reinstate Prussia as an independent state. The Allies said no, because by this point they'd already decided to take this land from Germany. And also, there were many in the Allies that felt that German militarism came from the legacy of Prussia, and they believed that ending Prussia's very existence after a lost war would kill the cultural roots of militarism in the new Germany that that was to come about afterwards. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching with a special thanks to my patrons James Bizanet, Kelly Moneymaker, The Pastry Section, Marvin Cassow, Rob Waterhouse, Mo, Aaron the White, James Castaneda, Danny Maloney, Jordan Longley, Marcus Arsner, Gustav Swan, Jerry Lambton, John Bailey, Spinning Three Plates, Rashid Ali, Colin Castleman, David Silverman, Izzy, Copper Tone, Maggie Pakskowski, Winston Kaywood, Lexi Schwinn, Spencer Lightfoot, Robert Wetzel, Fortunate Calf, Anthony Beckett and Sky Chappelle.